السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today ان شاء الله we'll talk about the force and weight or torque also measurement device one of the famous measurement device and the simplest one is the lever types lever balance types just put a certain lever above a certain fulcrum and make balance from one side to another to measure the other uh, device suppose that our uh, testing device is this uh, w1 and we know the w2 based on the distance between it and the lever of the column, we can uh, find what will be the force example famous example in the hospital when you go to the hospital to the clinic when they taking your measurement they put it to you under above the balance that is really load cell type it is a load cell type we will talk about uh, load cell okay okay just let me uh, go quickly to the type so we can measure the force by balance lever balance above fulcrum or by using the load cell and there is different type of the load cell uh, also by using the spring balance this is another type of measuring type also there is other types and the transducer using the string gauge or hydraulic pneumatic devices also to measure the force or piezoelectric devices uh, okay what is piezoelectric anyway it is a property of a certain material that produce electrical charge between opposite faces of crystal when the crystal is deformed by force to make them suitable for use uh, as a force sensor type many crystal exhibit this piezoelectric effect like quartz Rachel salt, lithium sulfate, tourmaline. Quartz devices, it is has sensitivity, but uh, it is has a very high impedance. يعني مقاومة عالية ومقاومة يعني تأثيرية عالية. The output voltage is derived under low loading due to noise, so it's exposed to the noise. يعني في عنده احتمالية إنه يتسرب الفولتج أو ينسحب علينا. Temperature affects also. The temperature will change the properties of the voltage uh, amplification. So it is not um, constant, it is a variable. But it's suited for measuring rapid change forces and for the uh, as for the static forces and instantaneous force. Uh, we mentioned that the tension and compression forces can be measured by the strain gauges. String gauges, it can be built by using the uh, these uh, quartz devices, and it can use uh, measure the the forces in, in order to convert the force effect to the piezoelectric if uh, piezoelectric properties. So uh, there is a material that give me a piezoresistive material, or it can also contain a material that change. They, uh, they can change the resistance under certain strain okay. uh, the idea here measuring this one by the stressing or tension uh, stress or tension uh, by either measuring that stress or tension tensional or compressing and compressible compressible forces of a compressible strain or tension and tensional strain under the certain force type weight measurements are made with the load cell we can also measure it using the load cell dynometers is a device that use twist or bending and shaft due to torque to measure the force famous one is wrench used to tighten the bolts let us talk about uh, the Type of the load cell Types of the load cells How can they work? Uh, what's the principle of them? And uh, also we will talk a little bit about the strain gauge Which is uh, originally or can say Basically is built on the piezoelectric principles Type Let's uh, just uh, first hear about the load cell types level out the two sides of the scale. Now we have methods that measure weight automatically. 
The first thing we need to know about a load cell is a definition of what we are talking about. A load cell is a force gauge that consists of a transducer that is used to create an electrical signal whose magnitude is directly proportional to the force being measured. There are four common types of load cells. They are pneumatic, hydraulic, strain gauge, and capacitance. Let's begin by looking at how a pneumatic load cell works. Since it is pneumatic, we know that it will deal with air pressure. A pneumatic load cell consists of an elastic diaphragm which is attached to a platform surface where the weight will be measured. There will be an air regulator which will limit the flow of air pressure to the system and a pressure gauge. Thus, when an object is placed on a pneumatic load cell, it uses pressurized air, or gas, to balance out the weight of the object. The air required to balance out the weight will determine how heavy the object weighs. The pressure gauge can convert the air pressure reading into an electrical signal. Next, let's talk about a hydraulic load cell. The word hydraulic should let us know that this load cell will work by using fluid, whether water or oil. These load cells are similar to pneumatic load cells, but instead of air, they use the pressurized liquid. A hydraulic load cell is consisting of an elastic diaphragm, a piston with a loading platform on top of the diaphragm, oil or water that will be inside the piston, and a Bordon tube pressure gauge. When a load is placed on the loading platform, the piston applies pressure to the liquid contained inside it. The pressure increase of the liquid is proportional to the applied force, or weight. After calibrating the pressure, you can accurately measure the force, or weight, applied to the hydraulic load cell. The pressure reading can be read as an analog gauge, or it can be converted into an electrical signal from a pressure sensor. The next type of load cell we will discuss is the strain gauge. This is the most popular style of the load cell. A strain gauge load cell is a transducer that changes in electrical resistance when under stress or strain. The electrical resistance is proportional to the stress or strain placed on the cell, making it easy to calibrate into an accurate measurement. The electrical resistance from the strain gauge is linear, therefore it can be converted into a force and then a weight if needed. A strain gauge load cell is made up of four strain gauges in a whetstone bridge configuration. A whetstone bridge is an electrical circuit that measures unknown electrical resistance by balancing two legs of a bridge circuit. One of the legs contains the unknown component. The whetstone bridge circuit provides incredibly accurate measurements. The strain gauges that are in the whetstone bridge are bonded onto a beam which deforms when weight is applied. The last type of load cell we are going to discuss is a capacitive load cell. Capacitive load cells work on the principle of capacitance, which is the ability of a system to store charge. The load cell is made up of two flat plates parallel to each other. The plates will have a current applied to them, and once the charge is stable, it gets stored between the plates. The amount of charge stored, the capacitance, depends on how large of a gap between the plates. When a load is placed on the plate, the gap shrinks, giving us a change in the capacitance, which can be calculated into a weight. Now that we have discussed the different types of load cells, let's discuss some applications. The first application we are going to discuss is a salt bag filling process. In this application, empty bags are loaded into a machine where arms will swing down and pick up an empty bag and place it underneath a funnel. Above the funnel, there is a fill bin that will dispense salt onto a conveyor belt with a built-in load cell in order to dispense the correct amount of salt into the bags. As the fill bin is dispensing salt, the load cell is giving an analog input to a PLC which is the current weight on the load cell. 
Once the load cell is reading a weight close to the full bag weight, the fill bin will close to a trickle until the correct weight is determined. Once the load cell has the full bag weight on it, the conveyor will start dropping the salt into the funnel and down to the waiting bag. The bag will be sealed and removed from the machine, so another empty bag can be loaded. Next, let's discuss how a load cell can be used in a pressing application. In this example, we will be looking at door panel press. Sheets of aluminum will be rolled into a die, which will be closed down onto the aluminum, creating a pattern on the door panel. As the die closes, a load cell is sensing the amount of force applied on the die and the aluminum. Once the applied force has reached a predetermined limit, the die will open and the panel will now be removed. If the applied force is too light or too heavy, the panel could be damaged or not pressed to the correct pattern. Determining which load cell your application requires depends on how sensitive and accurate your application needs to be. The accuracy and sensitivity are very high with capacitive. A strain gauge type of load cell would be the next in line when it comes to accuracy and sensitivity. While still useful in certain applications, pneumatic and hydraulic load cells would be the least sensitive and accurate types. In closing, we discussed the four different types of load cells. They okay, let's talk about um, piezoelectric characteristic. It is um, discovered by Piero Curry and Jacobs Curry in, in 1880s. Uh, what they discovered? They discovered that certain material, they call it the crystal, which is a semiconductor material made of the silicons. If you apply certain stress by hammering, it will generate a potential potential volt uh, they call these uh, properties as piezoelectric effects type what's the idea here the idea here that if you applied a field electric field as we bear Gabriel Libman if you apply the electric field on this crystal it will make certain extension for the crystal of course here shabab i'm talk about here very tiny extension micro micro length the word of piezoelectric coming from where shabab is coming from uh, greek origin which is piezo piezian which is mean press or squeeze but piezoelectric effects it's coming by molecular uh, dipole moment what's this dipole silicon uh, there is a certain bound with the oxygen molecules positive for the silicon and negative for the oxygen and they are uh, dipoles which means uh, the direction of their polarities within certain time so it gives me a certain domain uh, amount of uh, molecules will give me a certain domain there the dipole will this be in this direction positive to the negative here okay so I will take many of the uh, uh, domains connected together inside my crystal piece as is shown here different domain because there is different molecules and they are randomly dipoled different domain one of them uh, north one of them the west one the on the south one of the 30 angle 90 30 60 angle different angles at normal conditions but what will be happened This crystal, if is it exposed to certain electric field or potential energy or potential voltage, what will be happen for these do domains? Will be changed. They are what rearranged them in order to saturate or you can say uh, redirect the domain of this uh, crystal, uh, this silicon's part. Of course, because of this re change or this rearrange of these molecules of the silicons there will be some uh, extension happens in my crystal my crystal material so uh, the strength here or can see the length here will be changed as you see in here this is the effect of what of the electric field potential 
the length here extended so it becomes more length of course I'm talking about here Shabab I'm talking here about macro uh, inverse piezoelectric this is the properties of the silicon now if I apply by hammering or stressing on this crystal the same thing will be happened that's mean in order to uh, keep the balance of the energy these domains that are rearranged will what will generate a certain potential positive to the negative because see here the field electric field will what will be what becomes what uh, clear and uh, comes from the positive side to the negative side so it will generate a certain voltage this is the idea of the crystal piezo electric property which converts the mechanical elongation and compression into the resistance change. We know that the resistance is given as R equals rho into L upon A. Strain gauge uses the property that change in the length and area of cross section of a wire changes its resistance. The characteristics of the strain gauge are measured in terms of a gauge factor which is defined as a unit change in resistance per unit change in length of the strain gauge wire. It is given by a formula GF equals DR upon R upon DL upon L where R equals resistance of the gauge wire in ohms, DR equals change in resistance of a wire in ohms, L equals length of a wire in unstressed condition in meters, DL equals change in length of a wire in stressed condition in meters. Strain gauges are mainly classified into two types such as semiconductor gauge and a wire gauge. Wire gauge is again subdivided into three types as bonded, unbonded and foil type strain gauge. We will only focus on bonded strain gauge. These gauges are bonded with cement to the surface. The shape of the wire grid can be square, rectangular, circular etc. Bonded strain gauge has two leads for external connections which are isolated from each other. As the gauge wire changes its length, its resistance changes and corresponding change in resistance gives us the required output. Today we will discuss about the rope brake dynamometer, how rope brake dynamometer will work for measuring the power of the wheel. Firstly, we will discuss about the parts of the rope brake dynamometer. We have a rope with wooden blocks and this rope is connected to the spring balance at one end and at the second end it is connected to the dead weight and there is a wheel or pulley which is connected to the engine shaft for which we want to measure the power. So, what is the working of the rope brake dynamometer? This is the cooling water arrangement because friction is produced in this type of dynamometer. So, for the cooling arrangement of the rope, cooling water arrangement is done in this dynamometer. Now, see the working of the rope brake dynamometer. What will happen? This pulley will rotate and when we increase the dead weight then what will happen this rope will tight in the wheel and it will stop the wheel by producing the friction force in the opposite direction of the moving wheel and this friction force is equal to the spring balance reading which will come in this meter so this weight gives us the reading how much power is absorbed by the wheel by this spring balance meter. Now what will happen? The wheel will stop and this dead weight will go downward and the meter will show us reading how much power is absorbed by this wheel. So rope brake dynamometer is used rope and wooden block for measurement of the power of the wheel. So this is the working of rope brake dynamometer. Thank you. Okay, Shabab. Uh, now we'll stop here. Uh, we already talked about uh, these devices of measuring the forces 
thank you for listening and waiting for the next lecture assalamu alaikum